Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today we are talking about how time flies because in 10 days or a week and a half, it's Thanksgiving. So yeah, and then Christmas and then New Year. It's just crazy to me, but that means we are going to be entering holiday party season. And that means we're going to want a holiday dress or two, right? So today's video, is all about party dresses for the holidays. Actually, you could watch this video any time of the year because you might want to make a party dress for other occasions, so that's fine too. But this video is a bit long, sorry about that. The first part, we're gonna be looking at sewing patterns, patterns that I like and I would personally sew, and then the second part will be looking at fabrics that would work well for the dresses. So I will put timestamps below and hopefully you make it through the video and I really hope you enjoy it. So before we start looking at the patterns, I wanted to just briefly review some fabrics so you can keep them in mind when looking at these patterns. And then once we finish looking at the patterns, I'll go into some of the online fabric stores and show you some of my favorites that I have found. But I thought that if you had um, an idea of what fabrics are commonly used for party dresses, cocktail dresses, that might help. So first up, and we're starting in the upper left corner, the blue one, this is a taffeta. Taffeta is extremely common in par with party dresses. This one I think is a polyester. So polyester is gonna be very common. And of course it's made in silk, but it's going to be more expensive. I do caution you when buying polyester taffeta, you don't want it to feel plasticky. That is something that's quite common when buying polyester fabrics that are better in silk is that they can come off as plasticky. Well, they're just way more affordable. The purple one is a satin. It's a duchess satin, so it's more of a matte finish rather than shiny. But of course, satin, it's actually a weave, and that's the way it's woven is what makes it shiny. And satin is commonly found and made from silk and of course, polyester. It can be made with cotton, but that's a cotton sateen. Next, we've got a jacquard, and this is a metallic jacquard. So you will be seeing some of the fabrics we'll look at later. There's a lot of metallic in it. Metallic is very popular. And I like it. I like shiny things, so I'm all for it. Next is a velvet. This is silk and rayon. Now there are many types of velvets. There's, you know, micro velvets, penne velvets, which are really shiny, crushed velvets, burnout velvets, and we'll get to some of those later. But usually, velvet is made out of rayon and silk. Next is organza. And organza is technically silk, though you can have it in polyester. Now, the polyester one's going to be crunchier. The silk one will be a bit softer, though it is still stiff. So you'll want to keep that in mind. And it's usually sheer, though Mood has a lot of these double-faced organzas which make it um, more opaque, and some of those are really cool, so I can't wait to show you. Next, we have lace. Lace is super popular. In fact, I see beads and sequins added to most laces these days. I don't really work with lace a whole lot, but I know that some of you really like lace, so I wanted to include it. And again, it's super popular. Next, we have beaded fabric. And you can see there's some sequins thrown in there with the black beads. I mean, sequins tend to make their way into most things these days, I'm noticing. But again, I'm, I'm not mad at that. I like shiny. Then we have this lovely burgundy and red brocade. Now, there are some metallic threads woven in there. Woven in there and I just feel that this particular sample that we're looking at is super festive with this dark red color and the metallic. And we will look at that more in detail after the patterns. Sequins seem to be all the rage these days. 
This one is lovely, like rainbowy black sequins. I think it's super fun. And I've got some really cool sequins coming for you later. And then, of course, we have La May. La May, um, I feel like a few years ago, it kind of had like this, it's kind of a joke fabric. I don't know if any of you agree with me, but I feel like people would be like, oh, it's La May. La May is super awesome. In fact, you can find some high-end designer dresses made with silk blend La Mays, and they are um, really cool looking. I mean, the texture, the shine is just amazing. I think with La Mays, it's just important, again, to avoid those plasticky polyesters. So another tip I want to give you um, when working with these particular fabrics, these can be tricky, but there are two blueprint videos that I highly recommend that will help you with handling these fabrics. And I'm going to link both of those blueprint classes below because I think they would really, really help you out. All right, now let's move on to looking at some of the patterns I've chosen. The first one from Simplicity is 8599, and this is from Cynthia Rowley. So you have two versions, and the version she's wearing, which is version B, is off the shoulder, and then there is one with shoulders. So if we take a look at the line art, you can see it better. Of course, lace is going to be a great choice, though you will need to line it. Um, you may want to line the upper sleeve, see here, and then you can have this unlined. I think that would be really pretty and it would add some warmth. And um, sometimes lace can be itchy. So that would be another consideration to, to lining the sleeve here. Um, let's look at the pattern envelope. And it is calling for, you can do brocades. Okay, we're not doing gingham or cotton and sateen. Yes, I think those would be great choices and taffeta would work really well, in my opinion. Personally, I don't wear off the shoulder dresses, so I would do view A. This is a really cute option. Um, be mindful of the length of the skirt. It might be a little bit shorter than some of you like to wear. I know I like to keep mine just above the knee, but those are just things to look at when you're looking at patterns. You might need to make some adjustments. Here we have Simplicity 8591, and this is a 1960s vintage um, reprint. I thought this was super cute, and I know that some of you enjoy a vintage style, and this one is adorable. Honestly, when I saw this, I first thought taffeta. I just think um, the taffeta would help with the structure of that skirt, and it, it pr would provide some nice body. Um, so they're suggesting broadcloth and cotton types. Um, they do suggest sat, sat, sateen and satin and shantung. Sure, those would be great. And silk shantung is another really great fabric for um, holiday and party dresses in general. So I recommend a maybe like a two-tone taffeta. That would be really lovely. Take a look at her again. I love the belt. I love the self-fabric belt. Very cute. Okay. Next, we have Simplicity 8292, and you have a few options with this one. I chose this one because I like the view that she's wearing, and I believe that's view C. Now there, let's take a look at the line art. Um, there's a sheath dress, so if you want something more, um, you know, you don't like these sleeves, I guess, or you don't want this flared skirt, that's an option. But I chose it for B. So, uh, let's talk about the fabrics that they are recommending. You can do, charmeuse would be excellent. Crepe, like a crepe back satin would be really lovely for this, for the um, party look we're going for. What I think I might do is possibly do like a sheer kind of chiffon fabric. Now there are some chiffons with like metallics in it that would be pretty and then do, just for the sleeves, and then I would do the body of the dress 
um, like a different fabric, maybe a taffeta, maybe a duchess satin, so it's um, kind of more matte, or even a brocade. I don't know about a brocade actually with this skirt. It would work well with this skirt. And actually she's wearing view C, not B. Wait, yeah, so I actually like the view B. I know I said I like what she was wearing in the envelope, but I, I like that the, uh, I like this skirt. Heck, I like both. Whatever you, whatever you like. But yeah, so just for, when you're um, choosing fabrics, remember that these sleeves have to kind of drape that way. So you really wouldn't want to use a brocade on the sleeves, but you can choose something else that has more drape if you wanted some contrast. Or you, if you did all brocade, you can do this view here, which is this uh, sheath dress. All right, looks like I was, this one is really interesting to me. I've always been interested in this dress. This is another vintage Simplicity 8049. This is from the 60s. Apparently this dress has no, like, no closures. All you do is just wrap it and you're good to go. Um, that's kind of fun. And I thought like for simplicity's sake, no pun intended since this is simplicity, like you could do a crepe back satin and, um, you know, add a little bit of shine and it would just drape really nicely and it would make it pop for the holidays. So that is my suggestion. Let's take a look at the line art. Just look how easy it is. And you have these lengths. Um, so I was looking at view B in particular. Easy. She's cute. All right. Then we have this one, it's Amazing Fit Pattern 8047, and I like this because I feel like you have, you have some room for some creativity and um, contrast because you can put like a sheer on this overlay. I believe it is kind of two pieces that go, if I am correct. If it's not, it won't work but I think this is a separate piece and it goes over this if that's true it'd be kind of cool to do like a beaded fabric maybe a lace um, or something something like that just to give it more zhuzh I suppose so super cute you can make something really simple or you can zhuzh it up with the over bodice yep that's what it's called the over bodice would have some fun there. Okay. Six seven two through six seven two three from New Look. How could I not add this fit and flare pattern? I mean, this is giving me Audrey Hepburn vibes. I'd make it just like it is shown, or opt for maybe a nice jewel tone color in a satin or a taffeta or a brocade. There's a lot you can do in the way of fabrics with this guy. Let's see. We have, what are they asking for? Same cotton, cotton blends, damask, piquet, satin, crepe. Definitely saying you can get away with a brocade and you, the brocade on these little puff sleeves might be a little bit clunky. So I would stick with A, D or B, but definitely um, a satin. Now, one thing I did learn just through experience and classes is that you got to make sure when you're using a satin fabric, something that's shiny, is that the fit is really good because if it's not, it's going to be more noticeable. So, just saying. All right, I put this guy in um, the 70s vintage reproduction because I just think it's just so beautiful, honestly. Um, I would do crepe back satin with this. It would just be flowy and have some sheen and just be so elegant. Um, either view, I like views A or D. I like the, the sleeves that can like gather at the wrist line. I mean, either look good, all personal preference, but I had to put this one in. I would pick 
if I could find a really nice print, maybe, or I just really am partial to jewel tones. Why isn't it popping up? S these two. Stunning, stunning, stunning. You know what? Now I'm looking at this. You could line the bodice, have partial lining, and then use um, like a chiffon with metallic in it. I think that's what's going on here. It looks kind of metallic-y in this drawing. That would be really amazing. Now, sewing chiffon is really evil. I mean, I don't like doing it, but if you have the patience for working with that type of fabric, you can make something so stunning. Okay. All right, here's a new look 6391. This is sort of um, reminiscent of the other fit and flare that we just saw. It's slightly different um, in that, yes, we've got the bodice with darts and it's, it's fit and flare, but they have this option where you've got some bit of gathering or maybe pleating. I'm not sure how they're doing it there. Um, if you like that effect and then you have it here in the sleeves, which I am a big fan of. So I wanted to throw that one this pattern here. And in terms of fabrics, they're calling for sateen, silks, and satin. Sure, those would be just fine. And be perfect, actually, for that dress. Um, here I have Berta Style 6384, and this is a wrap dress. I like that you can have sleeves for the colder weather. And I love like the kind of pleats going on here. I love the detail on the here on the neckline. And let's take a look at what fabrics they're whoops, calling for. Um, viscous rayon and satin. Yes, satin, but there's, um, there are these low pile velvets and they're really drapey. And I feel that this, it would work well for that. That's what I vision, envisioned when I saw this pattern packet. I just thought it really could work well for these, that type of velvet with the low pile. Um, it kind of looks like liquid liquid metallic. And there's some lames that would work really well for this too. Okay. Here we go. This is just simple and chic. View A or B. Um... I think what a uh, velvet like um, they've got stretch velvets they can work really well and that panay velvet with stretch in it would work well she is wearing velvet I believe so let's see the envelope and see let's do that so yeah I mean it's it's asking for um, jersey or lurex jersey sure um, but and stretch velvets like I said there is, there's this interesting foiled French terry I came across on Moon, and I'll show you later. I mean, I think you could even use it for this. It would be kind of cool and super comfy. Okay, um, here's another Berta style, 7034. Right off the bat, I was drawn to the fabric, actually, in this one. It's like this silvery, metallic, probably taffeta or some yeah well it says taffeta here i bet that's taffeta what she's wearing love that color um so you've got taffeta satin jacquard and lightweight wools i'm definitely does this not want to show me okay it's got pockets too guys yes i know a lot of you like pockets and it looks like it's is that an o board yeah it's an elbow dart all four. We'll be looking at fabrics that we could use for this later. Okay, so I only have three patterns for McCall's, which is kind of unusual because I own mostly McCall's patterns for dresses. But anyway, this one just came out and it is a sequin dress. So clearly it is perfect for this season. And you have it in a short sleeve version, you have it in a longer version, and it doesn't have the um, tie though you could add the tie if you like it longer and this is a shorter version with the longer sleeves um i had this video in my sweater dress pattern because i said you can make this out of sweater knit and you can you can make it out of 
sequence, which is what it's made for. You can make it out of a lot of things, really. Um, but I think it really does serve, I think it serves well for sequined fabric, especially because when you're working with sequins, you don't want a lot of seams because it can be a pain in the butt to work with this fabric. So keep that in mind. Well, I picked 7999, and this is because it is a knit. And I felt like, you know, knits are really comfortable, and maybe we just want to be comfortable. But you can still do that with, like, getting a ribbed metallic fabric. So we, we need a knit with two-way stretch, 50% on the cross grain. So you can use velvet knits here, but I've been coming across a lot of um, metallic rib knits, and that kind of looks like what she's wearing here. That's really, really pretty. So I, I would wear that. All right. Now we've got McCall 7832. Um, I'm going to be honest with you, I don't like this skirt. It just is blah. What I like are the sleeves. I like that you can use an organza. You can use an organza with beads on it or with sequins on it. Just something to jizz it up. I like, um, so one of the skirts is more gathered. Like I like this skirt with the panels here. I don't like just this sort of A-line. It's there. This actually would work really well probably for a velvet or like a crushed velvet or panne velvet. Um, but for like satins, I'm going to opt for this skirt. And I love the idea of using of, of sheer sleeves. So that's what really drew me to this pattern. Now we're moving on to Butterick. And I wanted to give you a dress, um, a couple of longer options, because we don't all want to wear short dresses, especially in the winter. And I do realize that longer gowns seem to be more formal, but hey, I just think they're really pretty. So heck, you wear what you want to wear. Stunning. I mean, you can just make, there's so many different fabrics you can use for this dress. And you could put some sleeves on it. So yes, crepe, and then the lace, the sequins, stable knits. You could wear this in velvet. And like a stretch velvet, I think would probably work better. It says for woven fabrics. I don't know. Let me look at the line art here. Yeah, you definitely you can get a stretch velvet, and you don't even have to put a zipper in it. It would work so good. All right, moving on to Butterick 5850, and you may recognize this lovely lady. She's on the cover of the video. I adore this pattern. It just screams party to me. The big bow, what looks to be taffeta, you can have sleeves, no sleeves, the neckline on here. I just love it. I love it. I love it, and I want to make it. Um, yeah, so they're saying taffeta. I'm just going to straight up just say, go with taffeta on this dress. The reason I'm saying that is because it's going to give you the body to really, um, do this dress justice, especially when it comes to the bow. Because the bow has a lot of body. It's out there, right? You don't want to just kind of lump down. You want it to maintain its shape, and taffeta is going to do that for you. I am making this dress... This is one for sure I will be doing, so stay tuned for that. This one, okay, I look at this, I'm like, what is this? Why did I put this in here? <laughs> because it looks like so summery, but trust me, it's this one. Um, again, I feel like I just keep saying taffeta, taffeta. But taffeta is going to be your friend this season, I'm telling you. Taffeta, you can do a wool. Um... You could do, honestly, you can do a brocade on this. I think that would be totally fine, or a jacquard. But yeah, this is a great option. So we've got the off-the-shoulder one with this girl. This is really pretty. You could take the opportunity to, um, like, put in, like, a lace inset or put in some beads or sequins, something to give the dress a little bit of pop and interest and fun. 
Okay. Let's move that guy over. I don't know what that is. This one, I've had this pattern sitting in my box forever. I think it is just so simple and so sweet. I would do a crepe back satin, a charmeuse in it. Um, there's even some of these cool lames that if you really wanted to go metallic, because the, this design is so simple, you could totally get away with that. I love it. I've been meaning to make this for like three years and I haven't done it because, well, when you just keep buying fabric and patterns, you just never go back to what you're plan you were planning, right? That's a different story. Beautiful. Tom and Linda Platt have designed this for Vogue. Next from Vogue, want, here's another longer dress option. This is so chic and so elegant and so ladylike. I love the lines. I love the neckline. I love the length. I need to wear Spanx in order to look like this, but who cares? Let's see. Um, so this thing, Rayon Chalet Crepe Georgette. Okay. You can use, um, honestly, I think some, um, I do think with some of the lower pile velvets, the less heavier velvets would be okay. Charmeuse would be okay. Some of the satins would be fine. So, rock it. Could even do beading, but you'd have to line it. Okay. Here's another one that I've been hoarding and hoping to make. I'm a big fan of fit and flare. That's my jam. I love this dress that just, I love the, the v-neck. I love this inverted pleat. And there's a little coat that comes with it. Adorable. Um, so what I would do, she's wearing brocade. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm all about the brocade. I'm definitely going to make this in a brocade. The jacket, yeah, you could make a matching jacket like she's wearing, but you might want to do it in something like a contrasting rich fabric. For me, I might do like a velvet. We will see because I have to decide what fabric I'm going to use, but a velvet would be really pretty or maybe... You know, if you're using a brocade, you're going to have a, maybe have a few different colors in it. So maybe pull one of those colors out, like the main color or a complementary color. Not complementary, but one of the secondary colors and make more of a solid jacket out of that. Food for thought. Next from Vogue, we have 1624. And I thought this was a darling dress. And... I love the off the shoulders, yet it still has shoulder straps. It's got a cute little bow at the waist. Take a look at the back. Just really, really cute. Um, in terms of yardage, they're saying crepe, crepe back satin. And it says the belt facing is synthetic leather. leather. You can do a ponte knit. So in my mind, um, with this dress, I feel like you can get away with something that has slightly stiffer, if you know what I mean. Like, you could pretty much, like, sort of saw, like, for some reason, I look at this dress and I see, it looks like wool to me or something, like she's wearing something kind of like that. I feel like you could get away with, like, a, a nice wool. There's just, you don't have to do anything crazy with the fabric in terms of like sequins or beads because you want the details of this dress to stand out on their own and if you cover it up with like metallics and sequins it's not going to I don't I think it's just too much um so think about that ponte knit could be great um my favorite online shop for ponte knits um for firm ponte knits and double you know, not flimsy ponte knits, if you know what I'm saying, is Vogue Fabrics. Um, so there's actually a lot of fabrics you can use for this. It's just personal preference. 8943 from Claire Schaefer's Custom Couture Collection. So I believe with this, you're going to be instructed to do, to construct this dress using couture techniques. So that may not be your jam. But if it is, 
This dress is very elegant and very ladylike, and it is beautiful. And so you've got a slip to wear under it, and then you've got the dress. So, you know, this is like a lining basically, and then you could use beading or lace. So you're gonna use something sheer. Stunning dress. So if you want to up your sewing game, go for it. But I had to show you, I couldn't skip this dress. All right, I'm gonna have to show you a few indie patterns cause, well, maybe one or two here. I only have one or two. We have this Betty dress from Sew Over It. And this is a little bit reminiscent of the two new look um, patterns I showed you. But some people prefer indie patterns because, you know, for various reasons. So I think the Betty dress is a great holiday cocktail dress. So again, you can use your taffetas, your satins, maybe even brocades. The choice is yours. So the second and the only other um, indie pattern I'm showing you is this Alex dress. Now this is reminiscent of the, I believe it was Simplicity 70s dress pattern very similar with the sleeves and the neckline a little bit we need to find the line art friends i don't think the line art does this dress justice it looks kind of sad sorry i don't know because when you look at it it looks way better and I have seen um, some people on YouTube and Instagram I've seen their makes and they're very very pretty so I think you would and yes the glam inspired by the glamour of the 70s so there you go and you can do I think charmeuse would be really pretty with this um, sand washed silk I think something with a little bit of sheen would would work nicely Okay, so it looks like those are all the patterns I have to share with you. I hope that you liked some of them and again, the perspective of my style. So, you know, to each their own. But let's go ahead and start going through some of the fabrics that I have been looking at. Okay, so I have to admit, I've got a disclaimer here that a lot of these are coming from Mood. It just so happens that I think Mood has the probably one of the best selections when it comes to um, special occasion fabrics. And I think um, there are definitely other retailers and they're really high quality, but they're just way more expensive. Joanne also has pretty good fabrics too. And you go into their store, they've got some really cool metallic brocades. So um, I do have a few from Joanne's, but do go and have a look in their stores as well. So I just wanted to put it out there that a lot of these are for mood, but they are here just to give you ideas and inspirations. But I'm actually going to start with this one from fabric.com. This is one of my favorite finds in this video. It is so neat. It is leopard sequin fabric. Animal print is in super popular. It seems like it's always popular. But in this sequins, oh my gosh. So it's polyester lycra. Um, amazing. But, yes, it's so, uh, it's so beautiful. Um, let's just hop over here. I'm just kind of looking through my tabs and what I've picked, so forgive me for the randomness. So here's a mood section on beaded fabric. Now, in, I haven't really come across a lot of beaded fabric I like online. It tends to be, the ones I do are insanely expensive, like, $80 a yard. Um, so, no, we will um, refrain from those. But I like these, this tool with like the pearls. I think those are good for like the sleeves where you want the, the sheer sleeves. That would be really cute. There you go. Navy, white beads. But yeah. There's more beads, but I just wanted to show you. Um, anyway, 
So we've looked at that one. Now we're going to go to more sequin fabrics um, from our lovely mood. There's so many to show you. I just want to briefly go over it. Now they're using sequins a lot and beads a lot with the lace, so that's why those popped up. These, here you go, the animal print with the circle sequins. Then you've got those um, reversible sequins, so you can brush them up and they're one color, brush them down, they're another color. These, okay, these three right here are absolutely gorgeous, especially this one. Yeah, it's kind of disco ball-ish, but there's something really chic about it. They are just Oh, I love them. And if I didn't abhor working with sequins, I would probably make something out of it. Or maybe I will just get over it because these are so lovely. But those are my favorites, these three. Just ugh, spot on, spot on. Okay. Next, we have some velvets here from fabric.com. Now, these are all going to be polyester. Look at the price, so about four bucks. So yeah, they're gonna be polyester. But here is um, a stretch panne velvet. So panne velvet, because it's been crushed flat, it's going to give you that shine. But it is one of the easier velvets to work with. Now keep in mind when you introduce stretch, you will want to use the right needles and stitches and so forth. But handling it, it's not bad. So we saw a few dresses, patterns earlier that would be great for stretch velvet. In terms of velvet, um, I wanted to show you some really cool iridescent velvets. Um, Thai Silks is a really great store. I've been to their shop in the Bay Area, California a few times. They have an online presence, so you can order from them. And they have these really cool iridescent velvets that kind of have a duo finish. So depending on which way you're looking at it, it can have a different kind of cast of color. And I believe these are, yeah, they're rayon and silk. They're incredibly beautiful, beautiful velvets. I have this one and I haven't made anything into it yet. They're $25 a yard. Honestly, that's not bad. If you're buying like two and a half yards, that's 60 bucks or so for a dress. Honestly, when I'm shopping for a cocktail dress, I end up spending at least $100 anyway. I mean, that's just, that's me, but I don't think that's bad. They also have other velvets, so instead of just, you know, the iridescent velvet, you can get just plain, beautiful silk rayon velvets. Their colors are stunning. This one, beautiful. I'm meaning to buy that one. It's been on my list for a while gorgeous, gorgeous velvets. So if you're buying velvets, go to Thai Silks. Highly recommend them. Um, I wanted to show you this lace. So this has some sequins in it. I love the color, the hunter green. I think it's spectacular for um, the holidays. That would work well for, could work well for this, and you could maintain the scallop edge from the fabric to finish the hem. If you know what I'm saying here. Doot, doot, doot. So that's one option. Um, here's another lace. I think that, I love the design of this lace. So mesh embroidery, technically. Technically it's not a lace, okay? It looks lacy, but it's a damask mesh embroidery. Okay. That's just more lace and beads. We don't need to go there. All right. Our friend Joanne. What did you just do? Okay. I wanted to show you the Joanne brocade section because I find that they have some really neat brocades from time to time. They are poly. Um, this one is white and gold. It's kind of like a quilted effect, but it'd be really nice um, if you wanted to make to, like a little coat or jacket. It'd be great for some of those fit and flare dresses that we looked at. Here, let's go 
back to the first page. My computer's so slow because I have all these windows open. It's weird. Okay. Here's some lame. Um, I, I think I might avoid the lame from Joanne and, and spend a little bit more money and get it from Mood. I feel the quality might be a little bit better, but just go. If you have a Joanne near you, go feel it, and if you're okay with it, it'd be fine. There's these um, metallic knits, so that'd be cute. You can just make yourself like a simple sweater for the holidays and wear it with like a nice pair of jeans. Okay, we're supposed to be talking about dresses. So here earlier, um, in the beginning, we were talking about fabrics. I told, I showed you this metallic textured jacquard fabric in rose gold. Absolutely stunning. I think it'd be perfect for the fit and flare dresses. And it comes in a few different colors. I think there's like navy and like a black one. So if you don't, the rose gold isn't um, your fancy, then check out some other ones. So there's a metallic white and gold one. Oh, performance fabric with rose gold. Okay, so I wanted to show you this um, satin twill fabric from Joanne. Yes, it's a little bit pricier than what we might be used to coming from Joanne, but it's a twill, so it's going to have um, you know some substance, some body, so the, it's going to be a little bit heavier, but not too heavy. It's going to be great for pretty much majority of the dresses that we looked at and it comes in these really lovely jewel tone colors like the red stunning for the holidays the blue the green the black like come on this is awesome so i have um seen other youtubers recommend the satin twills from joanne and definitely like what Let's take a look. What could we use it for? Wouldn't use it for that. I don't think you'd have the right drape. You'd probably stick with a crepe back satin. You could use it like this. Definitely. Definitely there. Not that one because that's a... No. This. Okay. I just wanted to remind you. Fashion Fabrics Club has made an appearance. Reason, because they have some really stunning and beautiful fabrics that you can buy or simply draw inspiration from. They are a bit expensive. So I just love the metallics. I love the textures that we're seeing here. Anyway, check out Fabrics and Fabrics if you have a little bit of coin and you don't mind spending to make a nice cocktail dress. But I won't spend too much time. Okay, this one I saw in Mood in New York City um, earlier this year. This is a double layer organza brocade. Okay, so organza is typ typically sheer, but not this one. It's a double layer and it's a brocade and it is absolutely stunning. I love it. I love this color. It is itchy. I have felt it in person. So you're going to want to line it so it's not against your body. Um, this one, I think this one might be a little bit more sheer because it's white, if I'm not mistaken. Is this sheer? It didn't, the green one didn't really look sheer to me. Suggest using the material as an overlay. I, I, yeah, and, and the reason being just, for starters, is just because it's itchy as heck. This, oh, so pretty. I like it in the green though because it looks like leaves, like palm leaves or something. Oh, so pretty. All right, enough obsessing. Um, okay, here's the brocade that I showed you earlier. I love this because there's it's like a roses and it's red and it's aubergine. It is very Christmassy, very holiday. Fit and flare dresses. You can do that Vogue one that has the matching coat, the little jacket, coat, jacket, whatever you want to call it. Um, it comes in other colors, but honestly, the red has just called for me because of the holidays. There's this like blue and kind of gold one. It's stunning. I just think holidays, that red one is beautiful. Here's a like orchid and green one. 
but yeah and it is on the pricier side so you're probably looking at what two and a half yards you're looking at 125 dollars just for the fabric you'll want lining so you know it's all about your budget here is they have these um textured metallic brocades they're similar to the ones that joanne carries except the color range here is different and of course the ones that move are really higher quality but look at that sheen look at that texture oh my goodness same kind of situation with um with the brocade we just looked at you're going to want to line it and it's probably itchy bear that in mind but oh, yes please Okay, this one I came across, and it wasn't meant to make an appearance in this video, but I had to show you because it's like foiled French terry. I mean, one, it's going to be super comfortable, but it has a sheen to it. You can just get away with making some... If you look at my sweater dresses video, you can use this to make yourself like a cocktail sweater dress. I, I, honestly, go to that video... Find a dress you like, use this fabric, and you're going to be super comfy at your holiday party. I'm doing everything I can not to buy this because I'm telling you, I need to not buy any fabric. Here's another French terry, and it's laminated, and it is like this silvery color, and it is so gorgeous. Same thing. <laughs> Go to my video. Find yourself a good pattern. Make this dress. Oh, my gosh. What do we have here? Okay, so I found this random site called Bridal Fabrics. But I like that they have this Duchess satin that's supposedly non-snag because how many of you have snagged your satin? No, thank you. Um, they have really pretty colors. It's only $12 a yard. I like Duchess satin because it's not like super shiny. It's more matte. And I think um, it has a little bit of a sheen. But it's not too much and I like the subtlety of that I think it is very chic so this is a satin that I would use on the the new look fit and flare dresses like the Audrey Hepburn style dress we just saw it would be if you didn't want to use a taffeta go for this okay. next we have some crepe silk um, crepe silk is great for those 70s dresses that we looked at um, and you can find some that have more of a sheen if you're if that's your jam if you want something more shiny for the holidays so I just wanted to show you what was available at mood some nice solids okay more crepe back satins well this is a satin page from mood so you're going to have lots of options. You've got like this hammered textury um, satin. This is a lovely color. So some of the satins can have stretch in them. They're adding stretch to a lot of fabrics these days. So be mindful of that. This color is beautiful. Navy's beautiful. Then you've got this placé. So it's like almost like little tiny pleats, but it's like just like, hmm, how do I describe it? Like lines and they're textured and kind of raised so you could see that for yourself that's really pretty and then there's some metallic stretch satins those are really unusual and pretty so yeah just have a browse you will not want to stop looking it just keeps going um Here's some velvets from Vogue. I put them up here because I wanted to show you that Vogue Fabrics, which I really like, has some velvets as well. Though I haven't, I'm more familiar with Thai silks velvets, and these are a little bit more pricier than Thai silks. I think they're like five dollars more a yard. They don't have as many colors either. But hey, I wanted to put that out there as another resource. Um, I came across this awesome like burnout black and metallic luxury striated burnout fabric. I like it better in the gold. So check 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 it out. It's it's pretty cool. I could see doing like a fit and flare skirt and then maybe the bodice would be 
just plain black or maybe the whole thing would be this so it's burnout so you're gonna have to have lining underneath it anyway I came across this chiffon with metallic silver stripes and then it's got little stars in it. If you made a um, just a plain black dress and you wanted sleeves, you could give your sleeves some interest by using this chiffon. And remember, chiffon is sheer, but that's okay because I think it's really pretty to have sheer long sleeves. And this is a darling. So we have some taffetas from fabric.com and again be wary you know they're only four dollars they're probably really plasticky and not nice but there's this this um, sequin that I showed you earlier in the beginning and how fun is that all the colors oh, so gorgeous so that's where that came from came from fabric.com So one fabric that I didn't put in the intro is silk and just like silk de Bioni or Shantung and that's, I don't know why I didn't, but this is another really great option um, for your fit and flare dresses and, and a lot of the dresses in general. And it comes in a variety of amazing colors. So this is from Fashion Warehouse Direct, I think that's what FWD stands for, but they just have some amazing colors so check out some silk dupioni or the shantung especially because they come in, in these like duochrome finishes where it's like look this looks orange and pink it's just gorgeous and this one is twenty dollars a yard that's not bad for silk um here's some silk taffeta now again taffeta can be polyester but you're running the risk of it feeling plasticky but that's not always true with polyester. It's just a caution. This is silk, so it's going to cost more, but it is absolutely stunning and it's going to be high quality and it's going to probably feel better and it's going to breathe because it is a natural fiber as opposed to polyester. So Mood has it. It's almost $40 a yard, but no shortage of colors or quality. Um... We're popping over to, oh, so there's a metallic and lame section. So this is where you're going to find a lot of your um, lames, like ombres. And as I said earlier, the trick I learned when you're cutting fabric that has metallic in it is to use a hot knife because it seals the edges. And we looked at this earlier. Isn't that stunning? Okay, last, uh, I think I'm going to show you this kind of fun, no, eyelash lame. It's just kind of fun and silly, and it looks like tinsel that you decorate your Christmas tree with, but I think it would be fun if you had like a very simple um, dress, you made it out of that, because I don't know, maybe you want to be whimsical and fun. That's one way to do it, these eyelash um, fabrics. So I think I've gone through all of my tabs, and I hope this kind of gives you a good idea of, you know, all of the options you have to make a really nice holiday party dress. And it's just the combinations are endless. So share with me what patterns you liked, what fabrics you like, if you have a favorite pattern let me know. Let me know what your favorite um, fabrics are to work with. I'd really love to hear your comments below. It helps me out and I really like to communicate with you all. So if you're on Instagram, follow me on Instagram. I'm at SoCal underscore socialite. And if you make a holiday dress, please tag me because I would love to see what you make. It would be really fun and I really enjoy everyone else's creativity. I think it's super great. 
Anyway, have a lovely day and happy holidays 2019.